If I had a title for today's sermon, it would be A Father's Vision. And today I want to talk to you just for a few minutes about the Father's vision for His people. I do not know the heart or the mind of God. I can know the Word of God. I can have a relationship with God through the Word. I can have a relationship of God through the Holy Spirit. But there are things that happen in the world that I live in that I don't understand the heart or the mind of God. Would you say amen that you feel the same way? But what I do know about God our Father is this. We are all His creation, but we are not all His children. That's one of the biggest things that I have the opportunity to share with people on social media. Is people always want to say, we are all the children of God. But that is not true because the Bible tells us that we have to accept His Son, Jesus Christ, before we can become a child of God. But we all are the creation of God. We all are the creation of God. And God wants to love us. He wants to be our friend. And we as fathers supposed to be um, a literal interpretation in front of our children of who the Heavenly Father is. And we know that we live in a world that is broken. And every father does not know God. And because of that, He does not try to be like the Father God because he doesn't know the Father God. Now, if you are a a father that is a child of God and you're in here today and you're not trying to be like God the Father, then there's some work that needs to be done. I pray that your children are small because the older your children get, time passes by and the opportunities to teach them that you are a loving Father like the Father God passes by rather quickly. We need men who show the characteristics of an Almighty God. We need men that show the vision of an Almighty God in the way that we live, in the words that we say, and in the deeds that we do. That should be all of our hearts, is to be that person. And I think sometimes God gives us fathers, as I said, not everyone has this, but those of us that grew up underneath a godly household and grew up in an environment worshiping uh, and have a Christian father, that is a priceless thing. It is a priceless thing because they show us the qualities. How many of you have found that when there is no answer in your own mind, maybe you've tried something, maybe you've worked on something, and at the end of the day, you need someone to turn to, you can turn to your daddy or your father for an answer. And it's that way because that's how God wants us to be. At the end of every day, where whether we have the answers or whether we don't have the answers, He wants us to come to Him and to talk to Him and be a part of who He is. So there's several markers that we can see in our our human experience that we can see in a relationship with God. Now where does this all start? Well, here in Genesis, just after Noah and the ark, just after the Tower of Babel, which happens in the next chapter, We see that mankind, once again, has become very sinful. In fact, during the Tower of Babel, we see that God was so uh, depressed with mankind that He dispersed them, and He gave them all different languages. That's always been very interesting to me. How one moment, they were all working on a tower together, and they could understand one another's speech, and then God, just because He can said, you're no longer going to speak Babylonian, Hebrew, Aramaic, but you are going to speak Babylonian. 
French, Aramaic, Chinese, Indian. All these different things, then, as he dispersed them, he changed our life. And then the Bible gives us a special treasure who becomes the father of a great nation. And his name is Abraham, or Abram. How many of y'all heard of Abram before? Do you think there's anybody in the world that at some point between the ages of kindergarten and I'd say 30 years old, what do you think the likelihood is that you would never hear the word Abraham? Now in the world that we live in today, it might be pretty high. Because the Bible's not being preached and taught like it used to be in a lot of places. And then it is being taken into other parts of the world probably more than it ever has. So maybe it all equals its way out. But in studying this, the word Abram or Abraham uh, is a name that is blessed, that has been known by people all over the world since almost the beginning of time. Do you know that Abram means exalted father? That's, the word, that's what the word means, exalted father. And then when God changed his name to Abraham, it means father of many. Father of many. Now when we think about uh, God's chosen people, who do we talk about? Who are God's chosen people? They're the who? All right, the Israelites, which we think about Hebrews, don't we? But this man named Abram was a Babylonian. There were no Israelites. There were no Hebrews at this time. There is a man who is a Babylonian living in a city called Ur. And Ur is a place where religion and commerce is big business. In fact, it's a place where there are many little gods made out of metal and made out of stone and made out of wood. And they're worshiping. And the one that they worship the most, guess what his name is? Sin. S-I-N. And he is a God that they seem to want to follow. And he has his name out there amongst all of them. And Sin was the supreme moon god of the Babylonians. And we find this man, Abram, in the midst of this country of Ur, or the city of Ur. And he is no different than any of his neighbors. In fact... In the Bible, most of the time, when God is going to use somebody, He always starts off by saying that person is faithful, or it's someone who loves the Lord. But can you imagine living your life, and you're following all these little G-gods, and then all of a sudden, one day, the God of the universe comes to you and speaks to you. That's exactly what happened in the scripture. We know the story because we've read it, many of us, all of our lives, about Abram, or Abraham becoming the father of a great nation. But if you read it from his perspective of when it is happening, can you imagine how awesome it is that you've been worshiping and praying to something that is nothing? All of your life. And you're really worshiping the devil. All of your life. Because if it is not of our Lord, it is of the devil. So here he is, a Babylonian man, worshiping the devil. And all of a sudden, something real comes into his life. And he, he knows that it, it must be a god. Because this God is speaking to him and he is asking him to do something. And it is amazing that he did it because of his comfort. But here's what I want to share with you out of this. 
People in life are searching for something. Were you not searching for something before you knew Jesus Christ? Were you not trying to fill a void that was inside of you and maybe you tried to fill it with all kinds of other things, all your little G-gods, but none of them could fill the void until you knew Jesus Christ? Well, this man named Abram was worshiping idols and trying to fill a void inside of him and he could not do it with the way that all of his other people did it. But all of a sudden, the God spoke to him. And he gave him a mandate. He told him something that he wanted him to do. So I would ask this to you today because this was a request from the Father. Why do fathers ask their children to act upon something? Why do fathers ask their children to do something? It's a simple question that I throw out to you today. I like some of the things my daddy asked me to do. Some of the things my daddy asked me to do were hard. And I didn't like them. Anybody else in the same boat? Yeah. Some of the things he asked me to do were things that I did not think I could do. But with his help, I found out that I could. So I've not got an answer yet, so we can't move on. Why do fathers ask their children to do things? So you can learn. So either the father is going to benefit by what the father is asking you to do, or the person that he's asking to do is going to benefit. Think about that in God's standard in our life. When God asks us to do something, He is going to receive glory from it, but He doesn't ask you just for His benefit. He asks you for yours as well. God has asked me to do a lot of things over the years. And I can look back now at the things that He has asked me to do, and I understand why He asked me and how He was forming me. We talk about clay being on a potter's wheel. And every time the Father asks us to do something, we have the opportunity to say yes or no. And with every yes, it shapes us into a child of God more and more. So in the scriptures this morning, I like to read uh, Genesis eleven thirty one. It says, And Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife. And they went out from them, from Ur of the Chaldeans, to go into the land of Canaan. And they came to Haran and dwelt there. So Haran was his son, and the city that they went to was also known as Haran. And they left Ur and they went there. And it says, so the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. I want you to see that when God asked Abram to get out of Ur, who went with him? His daddy, and his nephew, and his wife. How many things in this life that you've accomplished would you not even have had the opportunity to accomplish them had not your heavenly Father walked with you or your earthly Father helped you? I can remember being underneath me and Julie's first house when a water pipe busted and I didn't know what a water shutoff was. I, I, did, I was 23 years old and I didn't know my, my backside from a hole in the ground. I think when you get married, Turbo, I think there there should be a prerequisite that you need to know how to take care of a house before you can own one. (laughs) But I can remember running up the road to my mom and daddy's house. What do I do? What do I do? And him telling me what to do and then him coming down to the house, Mike, and us crawling up underneath it, shutting it off. 
and then repairing it together. And him giving me instruction on what to buy, how to fix it, and how not to freak out when something happens because it's just stuff. And I tell you all this all the time, but I believe he taught me this. The more stuff you got, the more problems you have with your stuff. So fathers get us out of some jams and out of some fixes. And we see here that when this new God, the God of the universe, the God of creation, when he calls upon Abram to come out of his land and go to a new place, we see that not only did he go, but also his father went with him. The Bible does not tell us about what that conversation was like. It doesn't tell us how hard the decision was for Abram to make it it just says that they went and then it says in chapter 12 verses 1 through 3 now the Lord had said to Abram get out of your country get away from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you And then God said to him, I will make you a great nation. And he says, I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And then he says, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And the Bible tells us in verse 4, it says, So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. I want you to see something here that when God came to him and he asked him to do these things, if we look into the human situation of Abram and Sarai, we find a few things, and I'd like to share those with you quickly. First is, why would God the Father ask Abram to leave his country or his city of Ur? Well, as I said before, the city where he was at was a bad influence. We see in the Bible there's many, many cities that become bad influences. In fact, his nephew Lot ends up in one of those cities a little bit later in Scripture. Do you remember what that city was called? Starts with an S. Sodom. And that was a bad influence on him as well. Not only did it make him lazy, but it made him start accepting sin as just the norm. We could preach another whole message on that. But I'll say the first reason why he had him to leave was because where he lived was a bad influence. Where he lived, everyone was happy worshiping idols, and no one knew the real God. You ever been in an environment like that, where you could just feel the evil around you? And it was dark, and it was thick. It's out there, folks. Many of us surround ourselves in places where we're protected all the time, but you don't have to venture very far in this world before you can get into places where evil really presides. It's there. Well, the second reason why God was with him was this. Why would God ask Abram to leave his family? You see, upon the death of his father, Terah, Abram would have become the leader of his whole family and his household. He would have inherited everything that his father had there in Ur, and he would have been um, kind of the family leader over his brothers and the rest of his family. And can you imagine how hard it would have been to leave after his father died? You see, with God, timing is everything. Timing is everything. There's things that we all want to happen, and we want to have them happen quickly. But if we're under a a heavenly Father, and we're waiting on His time, we know that His time is going to be perfect. Where our time is a stretch sometimes. Our time, we're not ready. 
We're either spiritually not ready, we're not financially ready to receive it. As I said, any young man that owns a house should know how to take care of a house. And boy, did I ever think that I knew that I could take care of it. But I had to learn the hard way as we went a little bit at a time. So let me share this with you. If he and his father and his nephew would not have left whenever they did, he probably would have never left. So when God, our Heavenly Father, called Abraham, knowing that he would be the father of his people, the father of a country, he called him right at the right time. Here's what I'd like to say to you. Many of y'all are praying about how God can use you. You're praying about different decisions and things that are going on in your home, and your household. But I would, I would urge you to be patient. I would urge you to wait to hear God's voice. I would encourage you to be in the Scripture so that God could speak back to you. I don't know how many people call me here at this church and they say, Pastor, I'm praying about something, but I don't know what to do. And I would say, well, let me ask you this. Are you reading God's Word? No, I'm not reading the Word very much. I said, well, how is God going to speak back to you and give you the answers to your prayer if you're not in the Word? Because the truth and the way is going to come from the Word. They say, I never tried that or I've never heard that before. I said, that's where the answers come from. So God's timing is always perfect. But I also want you to see this. It says, now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country. When you hear those words, get out, it doesn't sound as though that's a very nice way of doing it. But God had to be urgent in the message to him because he knew what was going to happen in the future of, a, of, of Abram. Today as we sit here right now, we don't know what's going to happen in our immediate future and we don't know what's going to happen in our long-term future. But God knows. And if we belong to Him and if we listen to Him and if we follow Him and we're in Him, He'll take us the way that we should go. And we'll be right on time with His will and His way just as it was with Abram. Now, the third thing I want you to see this morning is this. Why would God ask Abram to leave his father's house? His third command there, he said, Get out of your country, get away from your family, and then leave your father's house. Well, we find those answers in the rest of the scriptures here this morning. If he would have not gotten out of his father's house... The scriptures tell us over here in the next verses that he would inherit a land that God would show him. He would have never found God's best in his life. He would not be the father of all of God's chosen people had he not left his comfort zone in his father's house. Had he not done exactly what God asked him to do. The second thing that he would not have experienced had he not left his father's house, is God said, I will bless you and I will make your name great. Now, how many of you in here say, I just want God to curse me? Anybody want God to curse you? I'd rather anybody else in this world curse me than God to curse me. Nobody wants God to curse them. But how many of us would say, I want God to bless me. And I want to be a blessing. Well, as we said, God did bless him, didn't he? Because he was obedient and he did what God would have him to do, he was a blessed man. In fact, he, um, he massed lots of animals and he amassed a lot of land and he had all kinds of uh, people and he ended up with his family growing and he became the man of God that God always wanted him to be and that's why today his name is great 
Do you think that if you don't listen to what God asks you to do, that your name would be great? Now, it could be great in a bad way. And it may be great in a way that would be forgotten. Do you know, um, I heard some people arguing last week, I believe it was, because we experienced Memorial Day. And Memorial Day was not talked about this year as much as it had been in the past. In fact, that date and remembering those soldiers who have passed on in battle uh, is something that's not being taught as much. In fact, those of you that have children in school right now, in, in public school, you will find out that U.S. history is becoming... Um, kind of set over to the wayside because it doesn't fit in to the major things that we're trying to be competent in. And because of that, we no longer know our history. We no longer know people's names and we no longer know events. The third thing that he told him was he would make him a blessing to all the families of the earth. Now, you and I are blessed today because of this man named Abram who did what God would have him to do. Now, how do you think we're blessed this morning? How has Abram blessed us? Now, picture at this time, God's asking him to get out of his land, get out of his father's house, get away from his family, and there is no family of God. There is no children of God. There is no chosen people at that time. How many of y'all are Jewish in here today? How many of you love the Lord God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, with all your strength in here today? So the Bible talks about how when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are engrafted into the vine, which makes us one of God's chosen people. Well, that vine goes all the way back to God choosing this man to be almost the seed. And God choosing him to be that. We are a part of a great nation today that loves the Lord because of this man and his sacrifice. Now, I want to ask you just three questions this morning. How many of you are willing... To do what Abram did. How many of you would be willing if God called you to get out of your country? And get out of your comfort zone. How many of you this morning would be willing if God called you to leave your family and go to a place that you don't know? Would be willing to do so. It's hard, isn't it? It's hard to think about it. I mean, it was hard enough for us. We had a junior going into her senior year that was displaced from her high school when we moved down here. Do you know how hard that is? A lot of times we don't take in what's going on in the family dynamics of a person when God calls them into action or to do something. We don't understand exactly who he was in her except for what the Bible tells us. But he was willing to go. And everything about this was for God's glory. And then last, would you be willing to leave your family heritage behind? To go somewhere to start over with God being your only God and your only Father. I want you to be in the mind of Abram. And I want you to know that if God can do it for him, he can do it for you. I once sat just as you sit. Just as Abr Abram or Abraham was going through his day, doing just what he knew to do, I once was going about my day just doing what I wanted to do. But then God chose Abram, and he changed his life. And if we allow him to change our life, we'll be able to do Amazing things in him and for him. I want to close today by sharing this. 
We're never too old to do for God. Do you know how old Abram was when God called him into this ministry? He was 75. 75 years old when God called him out, and he's living in Haran at 75. And God starts to tell him about the promised land that he was wanting him to have for his people. There was a song that came out in 1990 that speaks, I think, to God's love for me. And he he speaks of his love to you. And I think many of you will remember the lyrics of this song. And I think about this when I, I think about myself as a father, when I think about God being our father, when I think about my own experience of having a daddy. But... This song was called Love Without End, Amen. And it goes like this. It says, let me tell you a secret about a father's love. A secret that my daddy said was just between us. He said, daddies don't just love their children. Every now and then, it's a love without end. Amen. How many of y'all know that song? It's a good one, isn't it? And I think it's so good because it resonates in our hearts. We can identify with it as people because we have opportunities to have relationship with our mothers and with our fathers. We have the opportunity to have a relationship with our Father God. And I like that part where it says fathers don't just love their children every now and then. It's a love without end. Amen. Some of you, a year ago, were not seeking God. But He was still seeking you, wasn't He? Some of you, as early as six months, four months ago, were not seeking God, but He was seeking you. He was giving you yet another opportunity to come back because He loves you. And He wants to be your daddy. And He wants to hold you close, and He wants to help you. And He wants to love you. So this morning as we stand, we cannot imagine the weight that was on the shoulders of Abram because in his day and in his time, God had not revealed himself in the way that he did to him. Yet he was chosen, which shows us that regardless of whether what we are worshiping or how we are living our life, that we can be forgiven. We can become a part of the family of God. So we need to know that this morning. We need to know that if this is the first time that you've ever walked into a church home, and you may have came in here like Pigpen on Charlie Brown with a, a hover of dark cloud over you, that God can take and erase that dark cloud. And he can start making you, on the inside, a picture of a heavenly father. And he can change your life forever. Guys, will you give me some music for just a few minutes? I want to ask you just a couple questions this morning and give you a time to meditate in the Lord or to come and to pray and this is simply this we know how to be strong as fathers but do we know how to be tender if you need the Lord to help you to be a tender father and a father that can be loving We need to ask the Lord to help us to be that. We know how to be strong. We know how to fix things and do things. But what is our attitude toward our spouse? What is our children? What are they watching when they look at mama and daddy? As a father, do you tell your wife that you love her? 
Do you hold her when she's upset? Or are you saying, well, my daddy didn't do that, so I'm not going to do it. Far be it from me and your heart's callous in your heart. I've had people in this very church that tell me my daddy never told me one time that he loved me. I've had people in this church tell me my daddy never one time held me and told me it's going to be all right. He just wasn't that way. Well, guess what? You don't have to be like that, daddy. We have a loving father who showed such love in the way that he gave Abram an opportunity to become the father of a great nation. And he wants us to have his characteristics. When I have a problem, who do I run to? I run to God. And he wraps his arms around me. And he tells me that he loves me. And it's going to be okay. And sometimes, dads, we have problems being that man. It's okay for us not to know how to do everything. But it's not okay for us not to know the one who does. So I'd ask you this morning. You need help in being a better father. Some of you are stepfathers that are in here. You've inherited children through marriage. The handbook came without those pages. Now you're trying to catch on and you're trying to be the best man that you can. I'd share this with you. You can't be that man without God being the number one man in your life. We can't be godly fathers without God. So this morning as I pray that I would be a better father. My girls are growing up quick. I've got one that not too long from now, she's only four years away from what I was when I got married. Time is fleeting. And I need all the help from an almighty God as I can. Got twins coming. Need, we need help. All of us. To be better fathers. To be better husbands. To be better stewards of what God has given us. So I'd invite you today if you'd like to ask God to help you with that. Come down and pray with me today.